all of us love listening to music day in and day out. For this, we tune into radio frequently. But have you ever wondered how our FM radio receiver works? What is the basic functioning behind our FM radio receiver? How does it actually receives all the signals and transmits it to you? For this, we'll tell you what is a radio receiver, what are the types of radio receivers, what is the basic block diagram behind the FM radio that we use in our daily lives, and what are the components of the block diagram, and what is the circuit diagram of the radio receiver, and we'll explain the circuit diagram in detail. So now, we start with, what is a radio receiver? A radio receiver is an electronic device that receives radio waves and converts the information carried by them to a usable form. The types of radio receivers are the crystal radio receiver, the tuned radio frequency receiver and the super heterodyne receiver. The most basic radio is the crystal radio which is the simplest kind of radio. It does not need any battery or power source as it gets all its power from the radio waves itself. We can imagine how simple it must be and how wonderful the technology is. But then we slowly pro progress to a much better technology and we found the tuned radio receiver which is a type of radio receiver that is usually composed of one or more tuned radio frequencies, amplifier stages and followed by a detector that is a demodulator circuit to extract the audio signal and an audio frequency amplifier. So now we come to the super heterodyne receiver. A super heterodyne receiver, often shortened to a super het, uses frequency mixing to convert a received signal to a fixed intermediate frequency which can be more conveniently processed than the original carrier frequency. Virtually, all modern radio receivers use the super heterodyne principle because at the cost of an extra frequency converter stage, the super heterodyne receiver provides superior selectivity and sensitivity compared with the previous designs. Here is the FM radio receiver roadmap, at the end of which you will get to know everything about every component used in the FM radio receiver. So, first of all we have the block diagram consisting of the antenna, the RF filter, the RF amplifier followed by the mixer and local oscillator after which comes IF amplifier and filter, the demodulator, the audio amplifier and the speaker for the output. The antenna is an electrical device which converts electrical power into radio waves and vice versa. The antenna intercepts some of the power of an electromagnetic wave in order to produce a tiny voltage at its terminals that is applied to the RF amplifier. The RF filter circuit The RF filter is a basically a bandpass filter to reduce strong out of band signals. The RF filter enables the required frequencies to be passed through the circuit while rejecting the frequencies that are not needed. Typically, the selectivity provided at this stage is not high. Its main purpose is to reject signals which are at a frequency equal to twice that of the RF away from the wanted frequency. Here is the RF filter circuit diagram. By taking suitable values of capacitors and inductors, we can filter the signals and keep only the signals which go up to twice that of the required frequency on either side of the FM spectrum which will be useful later on. The rest of the signal is sent to the ground using particular combinations of capacitor and inductor. Next is the RF amplifier. The RF amplifier increases the sensitivity of the receiver by amplifying weak signals without contaminating them with noise so that they can stay above the noise level in succeeding stages. This circuit can be adjusted to select and amplify any carrier frequency within the FM broadcast band. Only the selected frequency and its two side bands pass through the amplifier. The amplification level is carefully chosen so that it does not overload the mixer in the next stage. The RF amplifier circuit diagram. We can slowly adjust the value of capacitor 1 in order to get the highest voltage value on the RF probe. Now we can adjust R3 again to get a voltage of 0 .4, 0 0.7 volt at point 1. Now we can adjust capacitor 5 and capacitor 6 for maximum output voltage. Next comes the mixer. In electronics, a mixer is a non-linear electrical circuit that creates new frequencies from two signals applied to it. In its most common application, two signals at frequencies F1 and F2 are applied to a mixer and it produces 
new signals at the sum f1 plus f2 and difference f1 minus f2 of the original frequencies which are called heterodynes. Next comes the local oscillator. A local oscillator is an electronic oscillator with a mixer to change the frequency of a signal. This frequency conversion process, also called heterodyning, produces the sum and difference frequencies from the frequency of the local oscillator and frequency of the input signal. The output frequencies from the mixer belong to the IF stage, discussed later. Next comes the mixer and local oscillator circuit diagram. In this circuit, the capacitors on the output are required to remove any of the high range local oscillator and radio frequency signals. They appear as a short circuit to the unwanted local oscillator and radio frequency signals. In this circuit, the local oscillator signal is applied to the base and radio frequency input signal to the emitter of the transistor. Next is the IF amplifier and filter. An intermediate frequency is a frequency to which a carrier wave is shifted as an intermediate step in transmission or reception. The intermediate frequency is created by mixing the carrier signal with the local oscillator signal using the mixer and local oscillator. The IF amplifier amplifies these signals to be fed into the IF filter. The main function of the IF filter is to filter out the noise which are in frequencies near to the information signal. This is the IF amplifier. The circuit is very similar to the basic audio amplifier stages we have discussed previously. The main difference is that the input and output are connected through transformers having tuned primaries. The transformers are tuned to the intermediate frequency. Another advantage of this arrangement is that the low impedance of the transistor does not damp the tuned circuit as much, resulting in a sharper IF response. Next is the IF filter. Adjusting the values of capacitor, inductor and resistor, we reach a resonance condition and it allows only a particular value of frequency to pass through the circuit. Rest of the frequencies are sent to the ground through the capacitor. Hence, only required frequency is filtered easily. So now we come to the demodulator. Up till now, I hope so all the components were clear. Now, we have just some more components left before we will actually receive the signal and we can hear that. So, demodulation is extracting the original information bearing signal from a modulated carrier wave. A demodulator is an electronic circuit that is used to recover the information content from the modulated carrier wave. The signal output from the demodulator is in the form of sound. So the demodulator circuit, although this seems complex, but by the end of it, we'll find it very easy. The Foster Sealy circuit operates using a phase difference between the signals. To obtain the different phase signals, a connection is made to the primary side of the transformer using a capacitor. And this is taken to the center tap of the transformer. This gives a signal that is 90 degrees out of phase. When an unmodulated carrier is applied at the center frequency, both diodes conduct. To produce equal and opposite voltages across the respective load resistors. These voltages cancel each other, cancel each other out at the output so that no voltage is present. As the carrier moves off to one side of the center frequency, the balance condition is destroyed and one diode conducts more than the other. This results in a voltage across one of the resistors being larger than the other and the resulting voltage at the output corresponding to the modulation on the incoming signal. Audio amplifier. Now we have received a demodulated signal and the last thing is to amplify the signal to receive a better and a more clear signal. This circuit amplifies the detected audio signal that is received from the demodulator and drives the speaker to obtain the output in form of sound. This is a very basic simple circuit diagram in which we are having two transistors. We have to just adjust the high current amplification factor that is the beta value of the transistors so that we receive the signals very clear and the amplitude is high so that they can be uh, listened to easily. So now we have taken all of the complex electrical circuits that we have shown you before and integrated them into one whole so that you can make your own radio receiver anytime, anywhere. 
Most of you would be wondering which component of the radio receiver will help you select the station. It is the mixer local oscillator circuit and in particular the local oscillator which helps to select the station. For instance, your favorite 93.5 MHz station. As when we try to t tune the radio, we are actually varying the capacitance of the capacitor used in the local oscillator. RF filter in sync with the local oscillator also filters the frequencies accordingly. Hence we get different IF frequencies as the output from the mixer oscillator and when this frequency matches with the one being used that is broadcasted on by a radio station, we are able to listen to that station, 93.5 MHz radio station in this case.